Hello and welcome to another Moog demo library. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Spectravox, and in particular, we're going to explore ways that we can turn Spectravox into something that feels like an old preset drum machine that you'd find on an electronic organ. For this particular example, we're going to be using Pamela's new workout, but you can use any module that's able to generate envelopes to feed into the filter band CV inputs uh, and trigger them. But Pamela's workout is particularly well suited because not only can I turn the outputs into envelopes, but I can also set the rhythm that those envelopes trigger. Now let's listen to the tone that we're going to build our drum sounds from. As you can hear, I just have a drone. My VCA mode is set to on, and I have the VCO set low enough in its tuning that it's starting to break apart, and I have the resonance for all the filter bands set to full resonance. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn down the individual bands. And the first thing that I wanna do is generate a kick drum. So I'm gonna do that from channel one of Pamela's new workout, which is just playing a quarter note envelope and I'm gonna patch the output of that first channel to the lowest band in the filter bank into its VCA CV input. Now once you patch voltage into any of these jacks, the knob above it becomes an attenuator for that voltage. So let's hear how that sounds. So as you can hear, I have something that feels like a kick drum, and I can play with the tuning of that kick drum both via the VCO frequency and the spectral shift. So if I adjust my VCO frequency, you can hear I can tune that drum, but I'm also able to tune it with a spectral shift. And really what I'm doing is tuning two different parts. There is the resonant tone of us using the filter, and then there is the oscillator that's being used uh, to run through the filter bank. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the second channel of Pamela's new workout, which is playing a Euclidean pattern, and I'm gonna feed that into filter band three's VCA CV. So as you can hear, that gives us something that feels like a wood block. Next, I'm gonna patch channel three into filter band five. Now I wanna make something that feels like a snare drum, so I'm gonna take channel four on Pamela's workout, and I'm gonna feed that into filter band eight. The next thing that I wanna do is make an eighth note hi-hat and I'm going to do that by taking the band's 9 and 10 switch and flipping it from buzz to hiss. And what that does is it takes the oscillator that's feeding bands 1 through 8 and it replaces that oscillator with a noise source just for bands 9 and 10 so we can get something that's a little bit noisier. So I'm going to take channel 5 from Pamela's workout and I'm going to feed that into band 10. Now I'm gonna add one more Euclidean pattern in channel six, and I'm gonna feed that into band six. So now that I have a pattern playing, I can once again tune all of the drums by adjusting the VCO frequency or the spectral shift. here I can radically shift the sound of this drum machine patch. I can also reduce the resonance and just listen to how it sounds using unresonant filters opening and closing while processing the oscillator. I can change the oscillator's wave shape or I can even change the carrier mix to introduce more noise. And with the noise, it's nice to turn the resonance back up. So 
So the next thing that I want to explore is actually using voltages to move the spectral shift and the VCO frequency so that those tone shifts that we can get by adjusting those two knobs become automatic and just happen in our pattern. And I'm going to do this with the last two channels on Pamela's workout, which I have both set to a random stepped movement. I have channel 7 set to move every two bars, and I'm going to feed that into the volt per octave input. So let's hear how that sounds first. So you can hear the oscillator's pitch moving every two bars. And now I'm going to take a, another stepped random that's moving twice as fast, and I'm going to feed that into the spectral shift input. While these two controls are moving, I can still adjust them to kind of dial in the range of where I want them to be moving. I can also introduce some of the LFO movement that we can use to control spectral shifting while it's stepping around. If I want to, I can feed some of these envelope signals into different filter bands. And for the filter bands where I'm not feeding any voltage information, I can turn those channels up if I just want something like a drone in the background. So as you can hear, using an external voltage source to alter and control some of the behaviors of Spectrovox can radically change the behavior and lead to some really interesting results.